All right. If you were a hip hop fan from around 2007 through 2016 ish, you probably remember Funk Volume. Hobson, Dizzy Wright, Jaron Benton, Swizz, my boy DJ Hoppa. Well, what you may not know is that I was signed to Funk Volume as a producer from 2013 all the way up until its very tragic demise in 2016. And if you don't know the juicy details of that, Google it. It's all over the internet, all right? Well, in this video, I'm going to list the five things that I learned from being signed to Funk Volume, both good and bad. But before I do that, be sure to like and subscribe. Also, I have an announcement to make. I am working on a very, very ambitious, my most ambitious masterclass to date for music creators. I'm not even finished with it, and I can already tell y'all, it's definitely hands down going to be my best one to date. It's called the Zero to 100 Masterclass. Obviously, judging from the title, it's going to take your career from zero to 100. That's all I can say about it. The information and the resources that I'm putting into this thing is next level. I can promise you that you're not getting this from any other masterclass or course out there on the internet. All right. It's that good. But there's going to be very limited spots available once it drops. Uh, I'm doing a live Q&A with everyone after the course drops. Um, so if you want a shot at getting in the masterclass, click the link in my description. Click on where it says free gift for music creators and keep an eye on your email because it's going to happen very soon and I'm going to send more details for how you can get in on it. All right. So here's the first lesson that I learned from being signed to Funk Volume. The power of social media. Now, it seems obvious. Yeah, Cato, we know social media is important, duh. But keep in mind, this was back in 2013, over 10 years ago. TikTok wasn't a thing yet. Instagram was literally only a few years old. And so the main platform back then was really Facebook and YouTube. Do y'all remember when you could post something on Facebook and it get like hundreds or thousands of likes and comments? And yeah, those days were nuts. But uh, the main strategy for all the artists to stay in touch with their fans back then when I was signed to Funk Volume was social media and mainly Facebook, but Instagram became big for us, you know, later on. Uh, but it was just so eye-opening for me to see how much of a direct impact it had on our album sales, on our touring sales, and just like an overall platform to share stuff with the fans. So that was definitely my motivation to start using social media to get off my ass and start becoming a lot more active on these platforms I literally started at zero, and here I am today with over a million followers across social media, and a lot of that was from what I learned being signed to Funk Volume. So that was the first lesson. The second lesson that I learned is that the world is bigger than you think. I can remember when Jaron first signed to Funk Volume, right before me, he had to do this live stream uh, with the fans on this platform called Ustream. I don't know. I'm sure some of you guys remember that. Uh, it was like one of the first live streaming platforms ever created. And I remember me, Jaron, and our homie Spitzwell, we were at Spitzwell's house. Pause. I know that's a crazy name. Uh we were sitting in front of his computer, right? Waiting for the live stream to start. And as soon as it started, I looked over at the chat on the side because Jaron was supposed to be answering questions from the fans. And I remember seeing the chat was scrolling so fast with everyone's comments and questions that we couldn't even read it. 
And that was the moment that I realized the world is way bigger than what I thought. Whatever perception of my little world or my little circle of friends that I had started to expand exponentially when I went on tour, when I got to meet a lot of the Funk Volume fans and just like take my music to a more national and global scale. And I had the opportunity to tour with Jaren on his first couple tours as his hype man and as his DJ. Some of you might have even met me on some of those tours. And I remember performing our music in front of a live crowd for the first time and seeing them singing and rapping along with these songs that we had just made in my living room, in my shitty little apartment. And that was a core memory that I still have to this day. Um, now, I never got to do any of the international shows because, you know, back then, Young Cato wasn't as poppin'. Uh, but I'd hear from the Funk Volume guys after they got back from tour how dope it was touring in places like Australia and parts of Europe because the crowd was just nuts. Like, they appreciated our music on a completely different level. Like, hardcore fans from every corner of the globe. And if you think about it, that was just a micro percentage of people that we were reaching globally. So yeah, 8 billion people on this planet. Don't forget that. No matter how much you have heard your own songs and seen your own videos, 99% of the world has no idea that you even exist. And I say all that to say, keep sharing, keep going. You have a lot more people to reach. The third lesson that I learned on Funk Volume was that niche is good. I think for me, prior to signing to FV, I had this idea in my head that I needed to become like this household name, like Dr. Dre or Pharrell, to have a career in music. And it was a fight for that one top spot, and everyone was going for it at the same time, especially me coming from a place like Atlanta where there's so much talent and people were getting put on every single day, right? But then after I really started to understand who Funk Volumes fans were, I realized that we tapped into this demographic of fans that were not considered mainstream and we were making millions of dollars from doing it. Not me, the label. <laughs> not individually, okay? Uh, maybe Hop, but definitely not me. And not Jaren. I know that for a fact. Uh, now, there might have been some like mainstream crossover, but we really tapped into and were pioneering independent rap on a whole different level. And I didn't even realize this at the time. But a lot of our fans like belonged to subcultures. The whole juggalo movement, skaters, outcasts, rap, teen angst, right? A lot of people who loved Eminem loved funk volume. And mostly people that just appreciated lyricism and hip hop. Today, that's normal. That's almost the new mainstream is like all these different subcultures that has become so popularized now, but... You can really be the leader and innovator in your own lane and be killing it today in today's music. And that's one of my favorite things about this era of being an artist or a producer. And Funk Volume, low key, was ahead of its time in that sense. Just keeping it a buck. My fourth lesson that I learned being signed to Funk Volume is that relationships can make or break your career. Look, we all know what happened to Funk Volume and how it very publicly crashed and burned. It's funny because Funk Volume was created and destroyed by relationships. 
And I have such a mixed bag of feelings about the whole situation because Funk Volume single-handedly changed my life. It gave me this incredible opportunity. But it also ended when I felt like we had so much more potential and we were just scratching the surface. And even after Funk Volume, every great moment in my career happened as a result of me meeting someone or having the right relationship. So if you're someone that's like kind of introverted like me and likes keeping to yourself mostly, let me say this. You can do a lot on your own, but you will reach a ceiling of how much you can do and be great at by yourself. To really achieve greatness in anything, you need to rely on other people to complement your skills and to balance out your weaknesses. Hop was a great artist, but to be honest with y'all, without the business structure that Dame and the rest of the team brought to Funk Volume, we wouldn't have taken it as far as we did. That's a fact. Another fact is that without Jaren, I wouldn't have made the music that I made. And Funk Volume would have probably never happened for us. Our biggest song, Schizo, would probably have never been created and Hop would have never heard it. So music itself can be a solo activity, but the music business is a team sport and it's a people business. And that leads us to the last lesson that I learned being signed to Funk Volume. The one thing that I wish I would have done more of when I signed, and that is enjoy the ride. Let me tell y'all something. We had a lot of fun touring all over the country, all of us being together at Hop's house, working on music, fucking around, cracking jokes, laughing, meeting all the fans in person on tour. All of that was like core memories unlocked for me. But sometimes it felt like we were just moving so fast all the time and always looking for like, what's next? And before I knew it, all those years just blew by in the blink of an eye. Sometimes you get so caught up in thinking about what's next and looking forward into the future that you just forget to stop and celebrate the moment, the now. And now is what matters because you don't get that back. And tomorrow isn't promised. I'm super, super grateful for all of it looking back because I learned so much from Funk Volume that I still apply to my career to this day. It's probably how a lot of you discovered me. And if you're still rocking with me to this day and you're still a part of my journey all these years later, I'm especially grateful for you. So thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Drop a comment if you remember those legendary funk volume days. Tell me what your favorite memory was from those days. And also be sure to grab the free gift in my description below. I'll have some very juicy details about my zero to 100 masterclass for artists and producers very soon. So be on the lookout for that. Love you guys. Stay safe. Stay blessed.